Hey everyone, welcome on in. My name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer. Today we're gonna to be talking about setting up a transitioning portfolio render. And so this is gonna be kind of a two-step process, right? We're gonna set this up in Maya or whatever program you're using, because this is pretty much universal. And then we're gonna be taking it over to DaVinci Resolve. Again, this part is also technically universal. You can do it in whatever program. I just use what I'm comfortable with. But um, this is generally how you see those really nice transitional portfolio renders like this one. So with that out of the way, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It does help my channel a lot and it helps what I'm doing here. As well as if you want to take that a step further and you'd like to support me on Patreon, there are free models every month. There are soon to be exclusive Patreon videos as well as access to all of the courses that I create instead of having to buy them outright. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, so we have our scene here. This is already kind of set up of a very simple animation with my camera. All this is is just a quick kind of pan of the model and it pulls out to the center and then rotates around the model. If you wanna know how I set that up, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. But we have our basic animation here. We know that our animation takes about 520 frames. And so the question then remains is how do we get our render out of Maya and then start setting it up so we can have those really beautiful transitions. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our render settings. And then in here, we're gonna go over to our AOVs. So if you're not familiar with AOVs, AOVs are basically just the different layers that make up your beauty render. So each AOV represents a different layer of either texture or lighting information. So we're gonna add a couple in here. So we're gonna add our, our normal, which is N. We're going to add our diffuse. Um, we are also going to add our specular. We're also going to add our albedo. and our specular direct and our specular albedo. That should give us everything we need. If you need anything else, you can always add them. But uh, generally these are just the ones I add. They don't really modify your render time all that much. So it's you can honestly add them all. It's just how many files do you wanna deal with? So we'll close that and with that, we're good. So normally in order to render out an animation, you'd go to your rendering tab. You're gonna go up here to render and then render sequence. And this is where you'd actually set up your whole sequence to render out. In order to do that though, you need to make sure that you've set this up in your render settings. So you need to set up what file format you're gonna work with. So TIFF, for instance, you need to make sure you change this to name, number, extension, or any one of these that will work for an animation file. And then down here, you need to set up your start frame and your end frame. The other thing you wanna do, especially if you're starting at like zero or something like that, is you need to renumber your frames. So for instance, if I'm starting at like negative two, I want to start my frame at one. That way, it's going to start the it's going to start the animation at one, and then it's going to finish the animation at 5:20. With those two additional frames, all this is doing is renaming everything. So you'll end up with like one, or um, you'll end up with like 522 instead of whatever number that you had. Um, the reason for this is because it just makes it a little bit easier to import it into your editing application. Uh, so we're good there. We've got our renderable camera set up and our resolutions all set. If you're confused about some of these render settings, I have other videos on rendering, so please check those out. Uh, from here, instead of rendering that, I'm gonna show you guys kind of how this functions. So we'll open up our render preview. Let me move it over here. And we are going to just render this frame real quick. All right, so with that rendered, you have your normal beauty render. So the thing that's changed here now is that we can go to our beauty section and you notice we have all of these now. So if I click N, I get my normal readout. Click albedo, I get my nice albedo. Diffuse, same thing here. So all of these are going to be the different kind of exports that we're looking at. And I realized that I didn't export my specular albedo in this one, but I have it exported already. So we'll, we'll go through setting that up now. This is how you can verify that your AOVs are working. And when you export them, it should be creating multiple folders. So I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So in here, I've got my BD1 demo reel folder. This is where I've been exporting everything. So this beauty pass with AOVs would technically be what renders out if we did a render sequence. So when you open this, you should have a folder for each one of your AOVs. This is how they get split up. And if you notice, you click on any of these, you'll have all of your separate frames in here. It does create a lot of storage space. I think this folder itself is like 22 gigs. So it's like 15 gigs. So be a little careful with this, especially just make sure that you're rendering to a drive that actually has space because this will take up space. Okay, so the next thing is, is what do we do from here? So we have all of this exported and our job in Maya at this point is essentially done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move over to DaVinci Resolve and take a look at what we need to do to put this together. 
So with a new project created, uh, if you're using DaVinci or if you're new to DaVinci, it's really an easy application to learn. It, it has its ups and downs, but it's generally pretty good. So we're gonna go right here to our editing timeline. And then in here we have just our regular timeline. So we're gonna open up our folder here. This is our demo reel area. So we'll go right here to our demo reel. You can kind of grab everything here so we can take our beauty, scroll all the way to the bottom and then just go back up to the top and then drag from frame one to here. This is gonna put this in your clip pool. And then we'll do the same thing with our diffuse. And then we'll do the same thing here with all of these. And so you're gonna just continue to grab all of these different clips and just pull them in real quick. This part does take a little bit of time, but you wanna make sure that you get everything imported as a separate clip. DaVinci is automatically going to take these image sequences and combine them to a video. So you really don't have to stress about making sure all your frames are in order or anything like that. As long as they are named properly, this will work just fine. So we'll go to our specular albedo. And then we'll go there. All right, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the clay UV and wireframe out of this video. It's the same process for all of these. They're just different render processes. So additionally, if you guys want a video on how to set up clay UV and wireframe passes, let me know. I don't mind making anything, or I don't mind making them. Okay, so we're in DaVinci. So we've got everything kind of set up here. So we're gonna grab our first clip here, which I believe is this one. Yeah. And we're gonna drag this into DaVinci. So a couple of things here. So you can see we have our video one. This is how we wanna kind of set this up. If your clip is still lagging, you can right click on this and go to generate optimized media right here. It's gonna run through and optimize the clip for the best playback inside of DaVinci. Okay, so now that our media is optimized and we're all set to go, the next thing we're gonna do is start actually getting the animation kind of set up. So I know that this needs to be my top layer. This is going to be the first visible layer. So we're gonna move this up to a video timeline two. And then I'm gonna drag in my normal, just because it's gonna be the easiest one to kind of see the change happen. And so you can actually kind of see, because this is a transparent background, you can kind of see this other one peeking through. That's okay, we're not gonna really worry about it. So right now, when we play this, you can see that we're still getting that little outline, but it's working just the way it needs to. And I need to optimize this real quick. Generally, if you're working with a format that's not EXR, uh, something a little bit more digestible like PNG or TIFF, um, those will play back better. EXR just does not play back very well. And so a lot of times you'll want to convert them to video clips before you actually import them. But um, this is just kind of a little workaround that you can do. Okay, so that's all optimized and kind of set up and it's playing back. Nothing's really changing here. This is where we have to get a little bit creative in how we're handling this. So what I want is when this zooms away, right there, as soon as it starts turning, I'm going to take this, drag this over, and I'm gonna take this and drag this back. So this is gonna create this little gap here and we're gonna kind of make our own little transition here. And you can get as creative with the transition as you want to. We're gonna just do a basic one here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our cropping. We're gonna hit this little button up here. This little button kind of sets the key for all of these different options, just like you would in Maya. So we're gonna click that. The keys are set and they're basically animatable now. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna go all the way to the end of this. And then we're gonna use our arrow key just to go back until we see the color here. And we're gonna take our crop right or crop left or top or bottom, whatever you wanna do. And we're gonna go all the way across. And so that now animates that clip to do that. So the next thing I wanna do is go right here in the middle just to figure out where my transition is. And I'm gonna change the softness on this because I want this to be like a gradual transition. So. Now, if we play this back, you can see how this works. We get our nice zoom out, and then we'll get that nice transition kind of flowing in. So that is how we can set that up. And you would do the same thing with multiple clips. So if we wanna drag this up, we'll move this up to video clip three. Let's see, three, four. Yeah, we dragged it up a little bit high, but that's okay though. Um, so let's take this one right here. This is what our specular, I forget which one this one is. This is like a shadow map. So we'll take our little shadow map here. Oops. You wanna make sure that you're dragging this in on the timeline in the same position where everything else is because you don't want these times to be offset. If you offset the times, you're gonna get lags in your animation. So your animation may like skip backwards 
So you need to be kind of really careful with how you're doing this. And generally we don't want these transitions to last too long unless you're really trying to showcase them. In that case, you can kind of boomerang them. You can reverse clip speed and create a new clip and that way you can just kind of show it off. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing this one now. So we'll pull this one back. And so we'll let that play for a minute and then we'll go right here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull to here. And then from here, we're gonna do the same kind of setup. So we're going to go right there. And then we're going to turn on our cropping animation and we're gonna go over, back one, and then crop to the right. And then we'll go right back to the middle just to adjust the softness on that because we just want that nice kind of clean transition. So now if we play this back, you'll see how this works. And that's how you can set up these really nice portfolio renders where you have the transitioning layers if that's something that you're looking to do. This works really well for showing off your UV, showing off your wireframe or any clay renders. And it's a really quick and kind of efficient way to do so. There isn't a way natively in Maya to just render this entire sequence out like this, unfortunately. So we do have to use another application to set this stuff up. But if you're working on building your portfolio, this is something you wanna do because you wanna be able to showcase those in an efficient manner that doesn't really take up a ton of time because one of the biggest things I see all the time is that people when they do their portfolios they'll do a rotation of clay and then they'll do a rotation of wireframe and then they'll do a rotation of UV and so like you have a demo reel that could take five six minutes when really it should only take about two minutes maybe three minutes at the max so this is a really good way that you can showcase these things you can leave it hanging for as long as you need to and you can kind of rotate, you have the full animation loops, so you can rotate back and forth and you can do whatever you want with these, as long as you make sure that you've rendered out your little intro sequence, which is our camera kind of pulling out, and then your full rotation sequence. So those two sequences need to happen in your animation in order to give you enough data to work with in your editing software. So for instance, if we really wanna set up, say a back and forth, right? We'll do that real quick. So we're gonna take this, And so we've got this clip that transitions, right? So that's cool. That showcases that and then showcases a little bit of the model. But what if we wanna show more of the model? What we can do is we can duplicate this over. We're going to have to kind of edit this. So we're actually gonna just reset the cropping on this. And then we need to right click on this clip and go to clip speed and then reverse speed. So you'll see how this works. So that now gives you that boomerang effect and then you can handle your transition. This is where you're gonna have to get a little bit creative though with how you handle this because you're gonna have to reanimate your transition but you're also going to have to figure out where your clip timing ends and starts with each different sequence. So if you're trying to show the whole rotation, you're gonna wanna start the whole rotation at the end of each clip sequence. So. We'll, we'll do that real quick. So we know that this one ends right there. So we need to go ahead and find then. We'll take our shadow map again. When that sequence starts on the shadow map. So if we kill that right there. We're gonna have to find the timing. So the timing is gonna be really tough to make sure we get it right. Um, this is kind of where it gets a little bit finicky if you wanna do it this way. But we can kind of play with this now. So we can set that up, we can go to the end back here. We're gonna just do crop right again. And we're gonna try to see if that plays back right. So not necessarily. So there's a little bit of a, so that's still rotating that way. And then this one is already kind of too far ahead. So we need to kind of bounce it back a little bit. And it's just gonna be kind of playing with the timing until we get something we like. Kind of like that. 
a little bit closer. Um, this is where this gets a little bit complicated, but again, you've got all this data that you can work with now because you have a full rotation of your model and you can actually go through and show however many pieces of it that you want to. Um, I'm not an expert on editing, so I'm not gonna go through like the different little kind of like tidbits that you can with editing software. A lot of it just comes down to experimenting and figuring it out just like it does with 3D stuff. But this should get you closer to having those nice clean portfolio renders that showcase your entire model and all of the work that you put into it as well as the technical skill that you used to build that model. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you guys have further questions, please make sure you leave them down below. I love answering questions in the comment section, so I've got no problem doing that. If you haven't yet and you did make it to the end of the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you can, join me on Patreon. But with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next video.